Have you ever felt like everyone's eyes were on you? Judging your every move, like every word you spoke was scrutinized, leaving you tongue-tied and anxious. You might have experienced what's known as social anxiety disorder, or in short, SAD. So, what exactly is social anxiety disorder? Well, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM-5, it is a stressful, chronic mental illness characterized by a fear of social situations due to the fear of being negatively judged by others. You see, people who are suffering from SAD often get mistaken for being shy, which can make it super hard to diagnose. But trust me, it is more than just being a little quiet at parties. It can seriously mess with every part of your life, from your friendships, to your job performance, and even your romantic relationships. The major symptoms of SAD include persistent fear lasting for six or more months, the fear is not related to any substance abuse and cannot be explained by another mental illness. They may also have physical symptoms such as trembling or blushing that others might notice and judge them for. When SAD gets so severe, it causes derealization. It is when a person is spaced out and is less able to recognize their surroundings. Because of this, some people may abuse alcohol and drugs to reduce social inhibitions, leading to dependency and addiction. Your doctor can prescribe a variety of different types of medication to treat social anxiety. Depending on your symptoms, you may need medication to treat your psychological symptoms, mainly SSRI and SNRI, as well as your physical symptoms, mainly beta blockers. Other medications available are tricyclic antidepressants, hydroxyzine, benzodiazepines, buspirone, and bupropion. You should have regular appointments with your doctor to assess your progress when you're taking medication for social anxiety. Tell your doctor if you think you may be experiencing side effects from your medication. They may be able to adjust your dose or prescribe an alternative medication. In most cases, the first-line treatment you'll be offered will be a type of antidepressant called a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor (SSRI). This type of medication works by increasing the level of a chemical called serotonin in your brain by inhibiting its reuptake. Examples of SSRIs you may be prescribed include fluoxetine, paroxetine, sertraline, citalopram, acetylopram, and fluvoxamine. SSRIs can be taken on a long-term basis but, as with all antidepressants, they can take several weeks to start working, therefore taking in conjunction with benzodiazepines for a fast-acting relief. You'll usually be started on a low dose, which may be gradually increased as your body adjusts to the medication. Common side effects of SSRIs include discontinuation syndrome, weight gain, seizure, GI adverse effects such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Other than that, you may experience sedating, this is due to the mild antagonism at H1 histamine receptor, QD interval prolongation, insomnia, and sexual problems such as reduced sexual desire, difficulty reaching orgasm or erectile dysfunction. These side effects should improve over time, although some may be related to your underlying condition. If SSRI doesn't help ease your anxiety, you may be prescribed a different type of antidepressant, known as a serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor, SNRI. This type of medication increases the amount of serotonin and noradrenaline in your brain by inhibiting its reuptake. Examples of SNRIs you may be prescribed include venlafaxine and duloxetine. The common side effects of SNRIs include discontinuation syndrome, cutie interval prolongation, nausea and headaches, and sexual problems. SNRIs can also increase your blood pressure, so your blood pressure will be monitored regularly during treatment. Beta blockers, including drugs such as propranolol and atenolol, are a type of medication used to treat high blood pressure and heart problems. However, they are also prescribed off-label for anxiety. Beta blockers work by blocking the effects of noradrenaline, a stress hormone involved in the fight-or-flight response. This helps control the physical symptoms of anxiety such as shaky hands, dizziness, sweating, rapid heart rate, and a trembling voice. They're most helpful for phobias, particularly social phobia and performance anxiety. If you're anticipating a specific anxiety-producing situation, such as giving a speech, taking a beta blocker in advance can help reduce your nerves. 
The two most common side effects of beta blockers are bradycardia and hypotension. Others are nausea and constipation. Besides all of the pharmacological options, it is also important to note that it needs to be combined with the psychotherapeutic approaches to treat anxiety disorders. You also can be responsible for your own treatment success. So, let me introduce you to exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is a psychological treatment that was developed to help people confront their fears and anxieties. So, when people are fearful of something, they tend to avoid the fear objects. Although this avoidance might help reduce feelings of fear in the short term, over the long term, it can make the fear become even worse. For example, if the patient feels anxious if he speaks in front of the public, he will avoid public speaking ever. So that's when exposure therapy comes into play. If you are afraid of talking in the public, so the psychologist might start by showing pictures of people speaking in public. For the next session, he might ask you to speak in front of him. And if you have progressed, he will ask you to speak in front of a crowd. So this process will greatly improve your condition, especially when talking in public. So over time, people find that their reactions to fear objects or situation decrease after exposure therapy. And this will help to show that you are capable of confronting your fears. And have you ever heard of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy or CBT? So, numerous research studies suggest that CBT leads to significant improvement in functioning and quality of life. One of the principles of CBT is that people suffering from psychological problems can find and learn better ways of coping with them, thereby relieving their symptoms and becoming more effective in their life. During CBT, you will be working together with your therapist for this treatment to be a success. He will help you to face your fears instead of avoiding them. They may also use role-playing to prepare for potentially problematic interaction with others. You will also find ways and learn to calm your mind and body. Now, you can practice it in your daily life. So CBT greatly helps you to be a functional member of society. What is Social Skills Training or SST? It is a type of therapeutic approach designed to teach individuals the social skills they may find difficult to implement. The training is often structured, employing techniques like role-playing, modeling, and feedback to help individuals learn and practice new skills. Body language, which is also known as non-verbal communication, involves postures, facial expression, and gestures. People with SAD tend to have closed body language that signals to the others that you are unapproachable or unfriendly. While this is a natural result of anxiety, it is possible to work on having more open and friendly non-verbal behaviors. Nodding, smiling, and maintaining open postures as they speak are ways of mastering the art of conversations. Although it is possible to overdo smiling, it is still better to smile versus frown. Another good rule is about 60% of the time, you should be looking in the other person's eyes. Avoiding eye contact makes you appear untrustworthy or disinterested. Besides, SST includes behavioral rehearsal such as role play in simulated situations. While gradual exposure to fear situation reduces avoidance behaviors, making real life interactions less daunting. On the other hand, SST also involves understanding how to set and maintain personal boundaries in various social settings, acquiring the skills to resolve conflict constructively and learning the art of declining requests or invitation without feeling guilty or anxious. Now, let's delve into peer support groups. These groups provide a safe and understanding environment. Sharing experiences with those who face the same challenges ease feelings of isolation and foster empathy and validation. Emotional support from peers can be incredibly motivating. Hearing words of encouragement and learning different coping strategies from others help manage anxiety more effectively. Regular group meetings ensure consistent social interactions and provide a sense of accountability. So, what's the combined impact of SST and peer support groups on quality of life? First, they enhance social functioning. Improved social skills lead to better relationships and increased participation in social, academic, and professional activities, boosting overall life satisfaction. Emotionally, both SST and peer support significantly reduce symptoms of social anxiety. Success in social interactions and positive feedback from peers enhance self-esteem and confidence. Hey, does psychotherapy only consist of CBT and exposure therapy? Actually, no. While CBT and exposure therapy are common, 
There are other effective options like acceptance and commitment therapy, support groups and emotion focused therapy. What is ACT about? Acceptance and Commitment Therapy or ACT helps you accept challenges and past experiences. In sessions, you discuss mental health struggles with a therapist, working through negative thoughts and painful memories to foster acceptance of things you cannot change. You identify core values, clarifying what is important and shaping your life. ACT channels energy into healing, providing lifelong coping mechanisms for challenges. How about support groups? Support groups, available both in person and online, bring together individuals facing similar struggles like social anxiety. Participants share their experiences and receive unbiased feedback, learning that thoughts about judgment and rejection are often distorted. They gain insights into how others approach and overcome social anxiety. While support groups enhance treatment and reduce feelings of isolation, it is important to use any advice received cautiously as they are not standalone treatment. An EFT? What's that about? Emotion Focused Therapy or EFT aims to help patients manage emotions more flexibly. In EFT sessions, patients learn to recognize, accept and find meaning in their emotions. Specifically targeting core features of social anxiety disorders, EFT addresses self-criticism emotional avoidance, and trauma-related issues. Patients learn to approach, label, and contextualize their emotions. The main processing mechanism in EFT involves activating shame to restructure it by assessing adaptive emotions known as changing emotion with emotion. Are these psychotherapies actually effective? While studies on these treatments are still in the initial stages, the results show positive changes in patients receiving them. However, further research is needed to fully ensure their effectiveness. Now, with all types of treatments given, you may be wondering, which treatments will be the most effective for social anxiety patients? Before that, let's have a quick look at the main types of treatments given. As explained earlier, there are pharmacological options, psychotherapeutic approaches, supportive interventions and other treatment mobilities. Therefore, I would say that treatments given will be solely depending on patients. Their history, conditions, age and gender will be taken account. There are some general treatments for some classified diseases, such as anxiety, which is cured by CBT, and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors can be used for persistent social anxiety, benzodiazepines for short-term anxiety and also beta blockers for particular situation anxiety like feeling nervous while giving a speech. 